All right, grilling with the good dogs. What are we doing today? Well, I'm gonna be cooking later tonight, but today we're gonna be cleaning the grill. But you can see, it's got a lot of buildup down there. I'm gonna walk you through this step-by-step -step on how to clean your Pit Boss grill. As you can see, mine is very dirty. It's used quite often, so there you go. First things first, make sure everything's unplugged, everything like that. As I left, unplug it right there. Now I have a big old bin tote kind of thing. Um, got my wire brush. And then I recommend Dawn Soap, but I remember my brother-in-law Zeus gave me some of his industrial uh, degreasing soap uh, that his company makes. So I'm gonna use some of that in there to clean it, but Dawn Soap will be just fine. First things first, let's get these grates out here. We're gonna put them in this bin and we're gonna drizzle some of that on there, fill it for some water, let it sit for a little while and then brush it off with the brush. All right, we're gonna get to that. Good dogs have come out to inspect my cleaning, making sure I do a good job. Chef Kleinbear, Chef Corkle. So we got the two lower grates in there to be cleaned. Got the upper grate right there. I'm not gonna need it for the brisket I'm cooking later. Uh, so I'll, co I'll clean that a little bit later separately. <clears throat> and it can't really fit in there. So I'm gonna do this one first, clean that one later. This is what you'll have next. It's just held in place, sitting here. And then it's got that little cup right there. But first things first, let's pour some of that soap on top of that stuff. And we're gonna put some water on it, let it sit for a little while. While it's sitting, we're gonna clean the rest of this. So let me get that soap. Chef Klein, I'll let you all let the video go to Chef Klein. All right. So like I said, this is just like Dawn soap, pretty much. All right, let's put some water right, in. So I got the soap in there. Apply some water. Got to make sure you agitate it well. Get everything working. And you just need enough water to cover all the grates. Now those grates, that's porcelain um, over a metal grate. That porcelain is pretty strong. I've picked it up with stainless steel surgical tongs doesn't even phase it. So I'd be surprised if any of y'all have chips in your grating. If you do, you're doing something wrong. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna let that <clears throat> suds up and soak for a little while. This comes out in two parts. You got this top part. Sometimes I can get crusted down by grease. And you got this part. I got a log over there I'm gonna sit them on and that's where I'm gonna clean them. First things first though, back of your brush or if you have a scraper sorry first things first scrape all the big chunks off of there and get it all off now luckily uh the red dragon and i just bought a new vacuum so i get the old vacuum and i can use it to clean everything inside there so you're going to get all these chunks off scrape out scrape out as much stuff as you can and then you're going to need that vacuum to suck it all up so let me scrape this stuff off i'm going to remove these i'm going to put them over on the log and i'll show you how i'm cleaning them and then uh, you'll see the inside, which I'm sure is going to be very ashy and sooty. But that's the main thing we need to get to. We need to clean that fire, that um, fire bowl, that little fire pit in the middle. Because if that has too much ash in it, it's not going to make for a good smoke. And it's going to make for some dirty meat. Don't want that when I'm cooking a brisket for a big old family. Grilling with the good dogs. Now I wanted to show you all this. Because these are the channels right here, this groove. That all your grease and fat and everything is going to flow down your little drip bucket that's right over there you want it relatively clean like this because if it's clogged up like that grease and everything will actually spill over the edge and you don't want that getting in your barrel so you want to clean that i'm not saying it has to be eat off of it clean it just has to be clean enough that you know drip of water or oil and grease will be able to flow from dripping around here all the way down dripping into there so I got a lot of stuff to clean in there. You can see a lot of it's coming off. That's that fire bowl. We gotta clean that out too. So lots of cleaning to do. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. And I'll let you all see what it looks like when it's coming to, back together. Again, I've used it a lot. I'm not expecting it to be, you know, pristine, but functional clean is definitely what we're going for. Really right, good. Now you can see inside that fire pit, pretty dang dirty, y'all. Pretty dang dirty. Uh, that, that heating element is actually right below that pipe right there. Uh, that's when you get that clean for sure. If that's not exposed, it's not going to heat up anything. So you can see that a lot of the um, <clears throat> ash and soot kind of put in this one corner. I can hit that with the vacuum. I'm going to get me a little brush. 
and finish scooping all that, getting all that. I'm gonna scrape around in there, get that clean. Once the bulk of the material and everything has been removed, then I'm gonna come back and hit the inside of this barrel all over with some citrus safe barbecue cleaner. Don't do it before because you're just gonna get all this particulates in it. It's gonna make a slurry that you don't wanna deal with. You want that to just mainly be a lot of the grime and stuff that's hooked on there. Again, not expecting it to get a pristine clean, but a good functional clean. We got the uh, flame guard over there. Still got to chip away at that some. And yeah, that's still sit, those grates are still sitting in there. We're gonna let them soak. All right, as you can tell, that's all the big stuff out. <clears throat> There's a little bit of chips left in there, but once I spray this all in that uh, barrel and then wipe it down, those will come out. Not to worry about it. Make sure you spray good in there. Try and break up any grease you got. I mean, the name of the game at this point is breaking up the grease. That's gonna be the hard part. Don't spray anything down in there. That's fine as it is. This stuff is, you know, FDA approved and everything. So is that soap. So it's all safe, but just no reason to clean down in there with soap. Um, everywhere else though, yeah. Try and clean it as best you can. Again, not expecting pristine on something that I've been using for, ooh, man, close to five years now or something. Gonna get, get that ready to go back on. And again, that's still sitting there. So grilling with the good dogs. Let's start spraying this down and it's raining. The red dragon said it was not going to rain, but the red dragon was obviously wrong. Uh, but you didn't hear me say that. All right, let's get this. Now I do not begrudge anyone trying to use a Brillo pad or something like that for this. You know, do what you can. They always just fall apart on a lot of these sharp corners and everything for me. So this stainless steel brush is just about at the end of its life. So I'm gonna use that here. I'm going to give everything a crit scrub again. Don't plan on much changing, but we'll see. Just about getting it clean. Grilling with the good dogs. Let me get on that and I'll show you, show you the results. Now, I'm still cleaning, but I wanted to point this out. Two of the most important pieces to clean are this probe here that's on the lid and this probe in here. All right, because that goes back and that regulates your temperature in the feed of your um, auger. So. You want to make sure those two probes are clean so you're getting good readings because that's going to feed back and make sure your machine is functioning properly. So I'm going to clean that up some more. As you can see, it's getting a little bit better on a lot of these surfaces. Not expecting a big improvement, but enough of it that I can call it good for cooking this brisket for this family. Grilling with the good dogs. I'll show you what those look like when I'm set right. up. <clears throat> Everything is scrubbed as much as I'm going to get, so I'm going to start wiping it down. As you wipe it down, use more of your cleaner, of course. Uh, I wouldn't try filling this up with water or anything. Don't do that at all, please. Just give it a wipe down. And one of the most important things, whether you do a good job cleaning or a bad job cleaning, is once you're done cleaning, if you've used any kind of agents or solvents or anything like that, you do a high temperature burn after. So we still got a long way to go before we get there, but once everything's put back together, we're gonna crank up that temperature pretty hot and let it burn out anything. Okay, and uh, in fact, I believe that's even in the instructions here to do. Anytime you use any kind of clean it, solve and stuff like that, do a quick pit burn after. So just turn that thing up, turn it on high and let it ride for a little while. Let it burn up everything. Grow with the good dogs, let's wipe this down. All right, like I said, not perfect, but good enough for who's it's for. Vacuuming out some of, some of that dry stuff here in a minute. Now that's clean. There's a guard for that. That'll go across here and it goes in those screw bolts right there. I have it soaking right now. I'm going to clean that in another minute. As you can see, that one's good and clean. That's going to give you your good readings. <clears throat> so now we're going to get those uh, flame guards back on here. And then we'll start scrubbing down those, uh, those grills. But they've been soaking in there for a long time, so I think it's going to come out great. We're going with the good dogs. Let's get back to it. Ain't nothing to it but the do it. These flame guards, you want to treat it just like it's a grill. You're not going to eat off of it. But remember, grease and fat and everything falls on them. So you want to make sure you're hitting them with enough spray that you're getting a little trail down there and you're getting some drippage. And you know you're doing right. So, if, you know, spray it down with your cleaner, any kind that you have. And then uh, get ready to scrub it down too, just like you would your grill crates. You know, I got all that fat and everything dripping on these things. Got to treat them nice too. An important thing to remember is also hit this backside with some soap and scrubbing too. Because any um, <clears throat> rust or anything that you have that's on this backside can fall into your fire pit. That's where your pellets are. That's where your smoke and taste is coming from. You want to keep it clean. I'm going to hit it with that hose. 
you want to see all that orange pretty much gone. That's all that rust that I came from scrubbing. All right, so it's not exactly the prized pig, but that is going to be good enough to go back on. Hit it with a little bit more scrubbing and water. You see you're still getting some orange in there. So let's keep cleaning that for a second. But that's just about ready to go back on. All right. the good dog. We got that in, still a little wet. Got that probe guard coming up and installed back on. So it's coming together. Got to wash off that um, flame guard. That's going to go right here. So got to get to those grates. So it's coming back together. And remember, you're going to heat it up. Heat it up when everything's back together. We're all the good dogs. Let me clean that. I'll put that thing on there. Next thing you'll see is me cleaning the grill grates. All right. That's all back together. All you're waiting on now is the grill grates. So they're both sitting in there. They've been soaking. And you can see that that water is pretty dirty because it's been sitting in that grease. First thing you're going to do is take your brush. You know, you're just going to kind of scrub them. Get them nice and clean. You don't need to agitate too much. Okay, worry about the top one first. Then flip them and do the bottom one. Then you're going to want to put some nice fresh water in here. Clean, give them another clean again. If you still got a lot coming off, you know, scrub it good. You should not need any more of the degreaser, though. It's been sitting in here for the last probably 30 minutes to an hour. So you should be good with that. So let's see how clean we can get them. Roll them with the good. All right. There's the grates. I started filling them with water again. Pretty clean. By comparison. Water's not turning brown, so that's a good thing. Still a little dirty, as you can tell. But I'm going to give it another scrub down. But other than that, I think it's pretty good. I'm going to go back in here. And we're going to turn it on high. And then that should be all there is. Got to throw away a bunch of stuff. A lot of stuff you use when you're cleaning a grill, you're not going to get back. So use something good, but definitely use something sacrificial. Now let's finish cleaning those grill grates because we need to get grilling with the good dogs. Now you can hear that hum, we're back together. Turned back on. I think I got enough pellets, looks pretty good. So we'll see how that works out. Give it a quick prime. Should start smoking, but I'm gonna bring it back to y'all. We got some smoke coming out and we got some heat going on. But you'll see how it cleans up. Grilling with the good dog. All right, she just started spitting out some smoke. I have it set all the way to high. We're gonna let it get up there. We're gonna probably let it sit for a few minutes. Let that baby burn. Grilling with the good dogs. I'm gonna start picking up my mess out here. It sounds like the red dragon needs my help, so let's get to it. Corkle, you've been watching the grill for us. Let's see what she's at. She's tacking at about 540 right there. Yeah, a little hard to see in the sun. Let's give it her a lift, see what she looks like on the inside. Very good, very good. I'm happy with it. Let's shut her down. A bunch of new pellets in there. I say she's ready for that brisket tonight, boys and girls. Cork, you ready for that brisket tonight? It's gonna be a long night. You have to queue up some horror movies and stuff. We're gonna be um, based on that um, brisket every just about hour with our usual mixture. It's gonna be fun, huh, Corkle? You wanna sign off for us today, Corkle? That's been Grilling with the Good Dogs with me, your host, the Fat Dad, Chef Kleinbear, and of course, Chef Corkle. Hey guys, it's me, the Fat Dad. Just wanna let y'all know, I hope y'all are enjoying the videos here on YouTube, but if you wanna see more, uh, we actually have a Snapchat where you'll see a lot more of the uncut stuff. The final product is what ends up on YouTube, but a lot of bloopers, mistakes, and experiments happen on Snapchat, so check us out there. You can find that on our Instagram page, where if you follow our Instagram, you'll see uh, candid pictures of the dogs, uh, throwback pictures, and a little bit about each one of the recipes that we put up here on YouTube. So give that a try. That's Grilling with the Good Dogs on Instagram. Hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching the videos.